Hi, this is Patrick Shaughnessy. I've been showing you some things about how to use LMMS. What I've shown you so far has been taking an instrument preset and sequencing it, and I also showed you pitch bend. But these presets are only part of what you can do in LMMS. It comes with a lot of presets you can get started making music right away. But it's good to know how to make a new instrument preset. Instrument plugins are the basic things that you make a preset out of. If you look at the preset menu, all of these are, in fact, showing what the uh, plugin for the corresponding preset is. Last time I was mostly using presets from the triple oscillator plugin. There are quite a few plugins. I'm going to be showing you some things that are generic across plugins. But to give a specific example, I'm going to be focused on the Bit Invader plugin because that's the easiest one to explain. So let's compare a couple plugins. When I left click a plugin name here, I get to the plugin interface. I can also rename it. I can rename the thing so it shows up there. So these plugins look completely different on the plugin tab. But the env slash LFO tab is the same between them. The funk tab is the same. The FX tab is the same, and I don't really use the MIDI tab anyway, but it's the same. So a lot of the things are in common across plugins, but the first thing you do is configure the plugin itself with its own specific requirements, and each plugin has a completely different way of going about that. It's like each plugin is basically a separate program. In the case of this crazy Zinad sub FX, it's like almost literally a separate program. It comes up in its own window. And this window has its sub windows. I don't use Zinad sub FX except to use the presets because it is far more complex than any other. But the simplest one, the one that's easiest to talk about by far is Bit Invader. I can explain this window of Bit Invader pretty quickly. And then from there, I can explain the other tabs in terms of that. So if we turn on the oscilloscope, we can see what's happening, which with Bit Invader is really useful. So, whatever plugin you have open, you've got this keyboard at the bottom. Up and down on the keyboard, you can adjust volume of your note and the notes are notes. And with Bit Invader, you have this little graph. And if you look at the oscilloscope, the graph is literally just, I want this waveform. You can doodle in it, you get that shape in the oscilloscope. It's literally defining the waveform. You can tell it the resolution you want, like at the lowest end, there are just four four points that you can adjust. You can say it interpolated to be a smoother thing or a flatter thing. For the small length, that matters a lot. For the large length, that matters less. These buttons preload specific uh, shapes. This one here just gives you a random waveform. Random waveforms all kind of sound similar to each other because they're kind of like white noise in a way, except it's not really white noise because white noise never repeats, and this will repeat at the uh, interval that this window represents. What interval this window represents, of course, is determined by the note. <laughs> See, the audience goes getting narrower and narrower with the higher notes. Uh, so that's most of how this works. Uh, if you want a smoother version of the waveform, you can match the smooth button on the right. And this question mark button is complicated a bit, but it basically lets you load a waveform that was stored in a file. Why you would want to do that, basically, it might just be you know mathematically what you want, and you have another file. And it comes with some preset uh, things that might be good waveforms. Uh, interpolate determines whether it's going to be flat lines or smooth, as I said. And if you have a wave that's not using the full top to bottom range, normalize stretches it out to use more of the range. Uh, if you've drawn to cover the top and bottom, that doesn't matter. 
So that is literally all the interface that's specific to Bit Invader. Uh, Bit Invader can make any wave as long as it's a single repeating waveform that does nothing interesting varying over time. And that means it's always going to make kind of a dull sound that doesn't uh, have a lot of interest to it. But that's sometimes all you need because these other tabs are all about doing the things that do make the sound vary in some way over time. Let's cover these top controls. These are here regardless of what tab you're in, so that's obviously a sign they're kind of important. Vol is your volume control. You can bring it over 100%. When you do, you're very likely to go into the red zone. But sometimes you actually do need to go up 100% one reason or another. You might notice this volume knob is actually linked to this volume knob here, and the same thing. Pan lets you send your output more to the left speaker or right speaker. When you do that, you can see the oscilloscope is now two lines for the separate left and right. Uh, pitch lets you adjust the fine tuning of the pitch of the entire instrument. That's going to be easy to explain if I set up a loop here. So I'm just going to have it play a note, rest a little, and just loop that. So if I play this, and I adjust the pitch, and if I want to adjust by a larger amount, this range control, I'm clicking and dragging to change the number. say that you're going to send this instrument into a particular FX stack. Um, right now, there's, there are no FX stacks defined yet, so it's just going to go to zero, which is the master mix. The FX mixer here, this button here, brings up this window. You see there's a master, which is numbered zero, and I could make another stack, but I'm not going to let in this video. So we have the ability to make a wave. I'm just going to define a wave. So we can see in the window and know what it looks like. Now we're going to look at what these things do.